Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Hina Joshi. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Dengue grips several Indian states. Cases cross 500 mark in northern Uttarakhand. Activists in Geneva highlight Pakistani atrocities in Balochistan. And protests erupt as Nepal's president declines to sign citizenship law. And now for all the details. Dengue outbreak has hit several Indian states, including Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh and Odisha. Most patients survive dengue, but it is estimated to kill about 20,000 every year. Many of them children who are not able to fight against it. Dengue is becoming a cause of concern for public health authorities in several Indian states as hospitals are reporting increasing number of cases of the vector-borne disease. The situation is alarming particularly in northern Uttarakhand state where cases have crossed the 600 mark and officials said dengue fever is common in South Asia especially during the monsoon season and there is no specific treatment. But with early detection and access to proper medical care, fewer than one percent of sufferers die from the disease. पूरे प्रदेश में लगभग 657 केसेस आए हैं कल तक और लगभग 440 केसेस देहरादून जनपद में हैं, 123 हरिद्वार के हैं और 74 केसेस पौड़ी जनपद के हैं। इसके अलावा कुछ केसेस नैनीताल में, टीरी गढ़वाल में और उधमसिंह नगर में भी आए हैं। लेकिन मैं इसमें ये बताना चाहूँगा कि जो रिकवरी � Hospitals in eastern Odisha state were also overwhelmed with dengue patients on Thursday following rainfall over the past several days. Authorities across the country have stepped up awareness efforts and fogging exercises. Dengue fever which can cause intense pain in muscles and joints is spread by the bite of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. The insect thrives in the megacities of the tropics. Most patients survive the disease but it is estimated to kill about 20,000 globally every year. India on Wednesday slammed Pakistan Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Jardari's remarks on minority and the Kashmir issue, saying that it was ironic that Pakistan, which itself commits grievous violations of minority rights, was raking up the same issue. Indian diplomat Srinivas Gotru slammed Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari's remarks on Kashmir and minorities at the United Nations that India is transforming into a Hindu state and said that it is ironic that Islamabad, which commits grave violations of minority rights, is speaking on the same issue. Exercising India's right to reply, Gotru highlighted girls from minority Sikh, Hindu and Christian communities are being subjected to abductions, forced marriages and conversions within the country while it lecturing others. Activists have long blamed Pakistan for discriminating against its minorities, which is manifested in various forms including violence and misuse of draconian blasphemy laws. It is ironic that Pakistan is speaking about the rights of minorities. For a country that has even stopped publishing its data to hide its same shameful record, it is amazing that they have even brought up this subject. It has a long history of having committed the gravest violations of minority rights that the world has ever seen. We know that what Pakistan has done to its minorities, it has decimated them. Speaking on the Kashmir issue, Gothru said the entire Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh were and will always be an integral and inalienable part of India. He said Pakistan should instead stop cross-border terrorism in the region so that Indians can exercise their right to life and liberty. India has long blamed Pakistan of arming and infiltrating terrorists across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. 
In news from Pakistan, Hollywood star Angelina Jolie, who visited Pakistan to draw global attention to the country's unfolding humanitarian crisis, said on Wednesday that many people she had met during visits to flood-hit areas in Pakistan would not make it if more aid did not arrive. The floods have affected over 33 million people and killed more than 1,500 across the country. Hollywood actress Angelina Jolie, also a special envoy for the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, said on Wednesday that she feared many people she had met during visits to flooded areas in Pakistan this week would not make it if more aid did not arrive. Jolie had visited people displaced by the floods with international aid organization IRC in an effort to raise awareness of the issues facing people in the country, including in some of the worst affected areas in southern Sindh province. Hundreds of thousands of people displaced by the floods are still living in the open. Authorities and aid workers have said more immediate help is needed for displaced families exposed to swarms of mosquitoes and other hazards such as snake and dog bites. I've been speaking to people and thinking if enough aid doesn't come, they won't be here in the next few weeks. They, will, they won't make it. Too many children, so malnourished, uh, and, and, uh, and then even if they make it through these next months with the winter coming and the, the destruction of the crops and the hard reality, I am uh, overwhelmed. By Meanwhile, the death toll from malaria and other diseases steering through Pakistan's flood-ravaged regions reached 324, authorities said on Wednesday. In some regions of Sindh province, one of the worst hit areas, malaria was spreading quickly among flood refugees who lived around stagnant waters. Doctors at medical facilities in Sinsevan city said they have seen an overwhelming number of flood refugees suffering from malaria and gastro ailments. Because of that, it's like 20% of the patients have increased in 20-30% of the patients. And now, because of the flood, they are drinking water, 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 and they are drinking water, but they are drinking water. जैसे अभी रूटीन में मलेरा बढ़े नेतना नहीं था, लेकिन बहुत अभी जो है वो ऐसे जैसे टेन बच्चे जो हैं बुखार के साथ आ रहे हैं, तो तकरीबन आठ नौ में उसमें जो है वो मलेरा पॉजिटिव आ रही है। The Sindh provincial government said on Wednesday that makeshift health facilities and mobile camps in flooded areas had treated more than 78,000 patients in the last 24 hours and more than 2 million since July 1st. Authorities said the situation may get out of control if required aid, including food and medicines, did not arrive soon. Moving on. Baloch activists staged an anti-Pakistan protest outside the UN office in Geneva this week and called upon the world body to investigate rights violations by Pakistan in Baluchistan. They blamed innocent people are being forcibly disappeared before being killed in staged encounters by Pakistani forces to muzzle any dissent, while Islamabad exploits local natural resources in the region. The Baloch Human Rights Council staged an anti-Pakistan protest in front of the United Nations office in Geneva during the ongoing UNHRC session this week and called upon the world body to send a fact-finding mission to Balochistan to investigate heinous crimes being committed by Pakistan Army and spy agencies in the region. The protesters highlighted Baloch activists and innocent people are forcibly disappeared before being killed in staged encounters to muzzle any dissent, while Islamabad exploits local natural resources in the region, terming it genocide of the Baloch people. They urge the UN to intervene and investigate the enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings. Pakistan is a curse upon Baloch, Sindhi and Pakhtun people. Uh, since its creation, since its annexation uh, of uh, Baluchistan, Pakistan has made uh, Baluchistan a hell for Baluch people. They are deliberately deprived uh, the basic uh, fundamental rights. Baluchistan is a resource-rich but least developed province under Pakistan's illegal occupation. While successive governments have promised to criminalize enforced disappearance, none has taken concrete steps and the practice continues with impunity. 
In news from Nepal, student unions associated with Nepal's ruling coalition held a protest and burnt the effigy of President Bidya Devi Bhandari on Wednesday as she has refused to certify key amendments to the citizenship law. This has created an open confrontation between the government and the president with some terming her move as unconstitutional. The student unions belonging to ruling coalition parties, the Nepali Congress, CPN Mao Center and People's Socialist Party protested against President Vidya Devi Bhandari's move to defunct the citizenship bill and burnt her effigy on Wednesday. The bill was earlier endorsed twice by both the houses of the parliament. However, Bhandari refused to ratify it within the stipulated deadline of 15 days, which top leaders of the ruling center left alliance say has deprived many Nepalese of their right to citizenship. He demonstrated chanted slogans against Bhandari demanding her resignation. Although the constitution of Nepal says the children of parents who have acquired citizenship by birth will get citizenship by descent, hundreds of thousands of youths are deprived of citizenship for the lack of a law. The changes would have entitled more than 500,000 people to citizenship certificates and eventually given them voting rights. It would also give citizenship documents to Nepalese who are citizens of foreign nations to do business and conduct economic activities in the country. The disapproval of the bill by the president has created an open confrontation between the government and the president with some terming it unconstitutional. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's Department of Census and Statistics said on Wednesday that consumer inflation in the country has accelerated to 70.2% in August as the island nation reels under its worst economic crisis in decades. Food prices soared up to 84.6% while the prices of non-food items rose to 57.1%, it said in a statement. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka had said in August that the inflation rate would moderate after peaking at about 70% as the country's economy slowed. Sri Lanka's economy shrank 8.4% in the quarter through June from a year ago in one of the steepest declines seen in a three-month period amid fertilizer and fuel shortages. The country earlier this month reached a preliminary deal with the International Monetary Fund for a loan of about 2.9 billion US dollars, contingent on it receiving financing assurances from official creditors and negotiations with private creditors. In news from Afghanistan, the Ministry of Public Health of Afghanistan's Taliban-run caretaker government conducted a nationwide four-day vaccination campaign against polio this week. The campaign aimed to reach 9.9 million children in five of the country's 34 provinces to eradicate the crippling disease. The immunization campaign has been supported by the World Health Organization and the United Nations Children's Fund over the past several years. So far this year, two polio cases have been detected in Afghanistan. Polio has been virtually eliminated globally through a decades-long inoculation drive. But insecurity, inaccessible terrain, mass displacement and suspicion of outside interference have hampered mass vaccination in Afghanistan and some of the areas of Pakistan where it still remains endemic. Dozens of labourers and employees are busy with the sowing process of hybrid vegetable seeds at government-run high-tech polyhouses in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Experts are focused on organic vegetable cultivation to complete the sowing process with organic methods. Have a look. Dozens of employees and labourers are busy these days with the sowing process of hybrid vegetable seeds. Under the kitchen garden scheme at the government-run high-tech polyhouses in Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir. These high-tech polyhouses are playing a tremendous role in preparing the product at proper time. Experts are also focused on organic vegetable cultivation to complete this sowing process with organic methods. For the last few years, the Agriculture Department has started these exercises and people are utilizing these vegetable seedlings prepared by experts at large scale. महीनों से हम यहां पर अच्छी तरीके से जो काम कर रहे हैं पिछले हमने पिछले अगस्त से जो हमने सीडलिंग दी उस वक्त हमने कॉलीफ्लावर और कैबेज की सीडलिंग दी उसके बाद हमने सेकंड शिफ्ट में जीएम डारी साग दे दिया अब यहां पर बहुत ही अच्छी तरीके से नेक्स्ट सीडलिंग के लिए काम चल रहा है नेक्स्ट मंथ 
Vegetable seedlings, including onion and carrots, will be ready, the employee said. The government authorities will also start special sales at reasonable rates, aiming to attract more and more people towards the kitchen garden concept, which is beneficial for everyone. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch this show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.